Problem 7.4 it requests the uh, calculation of a maximum load without plastic deformation and it gives us the stress at which plastic deformation begins that's simply the yield stress and that's given as 345 megapascals um, modulus of elasticity is given as 103 gigapascals. Now, what's the maximum load that may be applied to a specimen with a cross-sectional area of 130 uh, square millimeters? So, the area given is 130 square millimeters calculation for this is fairly uh, straightforward. Um, we use the yield stress and the area to calculate that yield of uh, that uh, the f force at yield. So since stress is defined as the force over the area, we're looking for that force. We rearrange this equation. This force equals stress times the area. In this case the stress is 345 megapascals and the area is 130 square millimeters. Now recall that 1 megapascal is equal to 1 million Pascals, which is one million newtons per square meter. But if I multiply this times one meter per one thousand millimeters and that gets squared that means I put a million on the bottom and in terms of my numbers a thousand squared is a million so these all get cancelled out and one megapascal here equals uh, let's cancel out those uh, meters, which is half the point. Meters, okay, everything squared gets counted out there. I end up with newtons on top and millimeters squared on the bottom. So I have one megapascal equals one. All the numbers got canceled out. Newton per square millimeter. So getting back to this, if a megapascal is a newton per square millimeter, then a megapascal times a square millimeter is simply equal to one newton. All I did was multiply both sides of this equation by square millimeters and ended up with one newton. So Finally, this force ends up as 44,850 newtons, or 44.85 kilonewtons. And that's the answer to Part A, now, Part B asks for the maximum length that it might be stretched without causing plastic deformation. That's where our modulus of elasticity is going to come in. And additional definitions of stress and strain. So, 
um, we're going to use Hooke's Law for this. Hooke's Law states that stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain. Now the strain is the change in length divided by the original length. And we are looking for the final length, which will be this original length plus the change in length. So we are we know this original length, we know the modulus of elasticity, and we know the stress at which this is going to occur. So all we need to do is solve for uh, the change in length. So I'll just rearrange this equation. Changing length equals the stress times the original length all over the modulus of elasticity. We plug in 345 megapascals here. And times the original length, which is 76 millimeters all over 103 gigapascals. Now how do these units cancel out? Well, megapascal fully cancels out with gigapascal, but we have an order of uh, three orders of magnitude um, the bottom here, so um, the ultimate units we're going to end up with here are millimeters, which is a length that we're hoping for anyway, and we end up with 0 0.25 millimeters. Finally, our final length is equal to our original length plus our change in length and it is given that our original length equals 76 millimeters as we sh showed there so we take 76 millimeters plus 0 0.25 millimeters equals 76.25 millimeters. And that is our final answer. Again, this problem considered the definitions of stress and the definition of strain. That's how we use the definition of strain as the change in length over the original length and how these are related through Hooke's Law with the stress.